She's just back from the Republican National Convention in Cleveland. And now, Lynn Bennett sits down with me one-on-one -on -one for a special edition of Quentin's Pulse Ups. Lynn! Hi. It's so good to see you this morning. It's wonderful to see you again. I appreciate this. Well, you're so welcome. I always like spending time with you. You are one of the most heartwarming people I know. Thank you. I really welcome. appreciate that. And I do my best to be genuine about it. You are? Yes, ma'am. And, I, you know, I want to talk to you about some breaking news right now. Okay. As you know, Debbie Watson Schultz is out as the DNC chair. As she should be. Talk to me more about that. Well, it, being a chairman of a party, because I was chairman of right. a county party, right. I was first vice chairman of the state party, you got to stay out of these primaries and let the people make a decision. She obviously didn't, so she shouldn't be the leader. And it's sad because I think Democrats think that she was a great leader, and now they're learning things they really don't want to know. Um, Rance Priebus got criticized for not getting more involved in the primary, right. but that was the right thing for him to do. Mm. Stay out of it and let the voters decide. And as you know, right now, she's going to be speaking at the Democratic National Convention tonight. Bad mistake. Yeah, and you also said this too, why wait? So politically, why is she waiting? I have no clue, truly, that the whole decision-making process, she's going to get booed. You know all the Sanders supporters right. there are going to boo her. It's not going to look good on TV. It's not going to look good anywhere, mm -hmm. much less TV. Why open that up? Why wait till the end of the convention for her to step down? Just go ahead and let her do it. You're going to appoint a temporary convention chairman anyway. Right. Go ahead and go with that person and move on. You're just dragging out the inevitable, and I don't understand why they want to do that. The Republican National Convention. Yes. You were there as a delegate. I was. Walk me back down memory lane and tell me what memories play back in your mind of the convention. Well, our favorite bar, and I say that because it was called the Chocolate, Chocolate Bar. Chocolate Bar, I saw it on Facebook. Yes, we went there several times. It was only a block from us. Okay. Um, and they served food. They had sandwiches oh, and good. soups and all kinds of and So it was a good place to eat, but they had lots of chocolate. Wow. Chocolate everything oh, that you could order. So. Um, We'd go there to eat and eat the chocolate, yeah. you know, because it was wonderful. So that was, and, and they treated us. They loved having us there, so mm -hmm. we loved being there. Right, yeah. Um, another was the opening night reception with all of the delegates down on Lake Erie right. at the oh, Rock yeah. and Roll Hall of Fame. That's right. That was a lot of fun. They brought in these food trucks, and the food was excellent. We tried as many as we could possibly take because they fill you up pretty fast. Well, I bet. Even though they were small portions, right. There was a lot of them there, and the food was excellent. The Three Dog Night played. I know to young people, like, who is that? Right. But in my generation, they were a big deal, and I enjoyed listening to them. In fact, we were going to leave early. We had planned to just leave early, but we stayed through the whole thing until the fireworks wow. because we had such a great time. Mm. Um, other memorable moments were, of course, Ted Cruz's speech. I was a little disappointed, as I at one time did support Ted right. Cruz. Um, that he just didn't come out full force and say what he needed to say. I'm sure he's got his reasons, but I know that the Texas delegation was upset and embarrassed by his speech. Um, so, But I wish him the best. Um, I just don't think he realized the throwback that was going to happen as a result of him. He was allowed to speak. He was allowed to say what he wanted to say. Um, which is fine, but if there's any blowback, it's he brought it on himself. Wow. Let's turn to Senator Tim Scott. I sure yeah. love Senator Tim he, Scott. He's one of the best, right? Yes, he is. And I know that he made a tremendous speech on the Senate floor, I believe, before or during the convention. It was a series of three speeches, I believe, about um, the treatment of minorities by police officers and his experience with that. And I encouraged everyone to listen. Because we're not, we don't walk in each other's shoes. None of us do. Whether we're white or black or Hispanic, we don't walk in each other's shoes. We don't know what others have to deal with in their life. And his series of videos really touched me. Mm -hmm. There is a problem that we need to figure out. I don't know how we figure it out, but I think if we have the dialogue and discussion, we'll eventually get to that point. And let's talk about dialogues, because obviously we, I mean, for weeks now. It's been discussions about the you know latest going on in South Carolina politics. Yeah. From Charleston to Columbia, from Lee Bright to William Cogswell. Yeah. You've been in this position. You're actually in your own primary coming up in November. What is it like to be 
a politician in South Carolina right now? Well, I personally haven't had a problem, but you know me, I don't try to pick fights right. with anybody, right. Right. and um, I try to listen to what everybody has to say. I may not agree with right. it, but I'll respect the opinion. Um, in some of these cases, I I don't know that I don't know Cogswell. I mean, he came out of nowhere. No right. one yeah. really knows him, so I don't I can't comment about right. him. Um, Lee Bright, I was surprised, mm -hmm. but he. He kind of built that bridge himself. I mean, he, he liked the news media, he liked the coverage, he liked being diverse and, um, what's the word, challenging okay. to others. Okay. Um, and sometimes there's a price to pay for doing that. Because as a representative right. of your district, you don't just represent one faction. You represent a whole lot of people that may not agree with you. You're not up there to be dictator, you're up there to be representative and you need to listen to everybody. You don't have to agree with them, yeah. but you need to be respectful. And I think sometimes he just failed to do that. Nice guy, yeah. you know, smart guy, but he did some pretty controversial things along the way, and people don't really like constant controversy. You're right about that. Mm -hmm. Let's turn to your own race. Oh, wow. House District 114. Yes, sir. Now you're going up against Bob Aubin. Yes, sir. In November. Um, why? Let me know why now. Well, because I don't think the people in District 114 were well represented under Mrs. Tinkler. Okay. I know that she said she was looking out for the state, but that's not what we elected her. If she wouldn't be a state representative, she should have run for a state office. She was elected to represent 114, and she promised to be an independent voice, and she never was. She was straight down the line, social, progressive issues, never paying attention or responding to the, the discussion that was going on inside of her district. Um, so I was quite surprised that she dropped out um, to run against um, Andy Smith. Smith for treasurer because she has no background in that, whereas he has lots, he's a CPA, she's a real estate person. Um, we need to be represented. And I didn't see anybody stepping up to do that. Okay. So I've always been one to say, if you don't like what's going on, go do something. Yes. So that's kind of what made my decision. I didn't like what's going on. Yeah. I want the people to be represented. I want them to know they have a voice. Sure. You know, not someone that's that. I will not be a candidate that's ruled by the party. Yes. And they know that about me. Yes, indeed, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Describe to me the following one word: the half cent sales tax referendum. I'm undecided on that. We've had a half cent sales right. tax, and I'm not so sure it works so well. I don't know that another half cent sales tax okay. is going to make it better. Okay. A 526. Finish. Wow, wow. Chip Limehouse, Paul Thurman, leaving the uh, South Carolina State House. Our loss. It's mm. a loss to us. They were good representatives and looked out for the people of this area. They fought for Charleston and the Low Country, and um, now all the new people coming in, including you know, we're going to be freshmen, so we're sitting in the back row. Right. We won't have a whole lot of influence at first, so it's just a loss to us mm -hmm. that these two have just. I mean, I understand their reasons. Right. Just been there twenty years. Right. He's tired. Right. Um, Paul's growing his family, and he needs to spend time with. Them. I understand that, but it's yeah. such a loss. Sandy Sin. I don't know her very well. Um, so I would say unknown. I have met her. Yeah. I have talked to her. She seems like a great gal. Um, it's exciting that we have two female senators right. from the GOP in the, in the Senate. Um, but I just have to wait and see. I'm sure she'll be fine. I just don't know her. Melvin Emanuel one year later. Who? Melvin Emanuel one year later. I feel like we've forgotten. I feel like we didn't stick with the unity that was there. I think people in Charleston are still loving, caring, kind people. But um, I didn't see a whole lot of uprising at the anniversary of people, and I was disappointed. I would have been there, but I was ill, right. so I couldn't be there. And I guess I was kind of disappointed at the fact that Charleston didn't show up like it did after the incident happened. Right. 
you talk about being ill. Tell me, how are you right now? I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. I had a disease called diverticulitis, wow. which attacks your intestine. And um, it's a slow recovery, but I'm recovering. Oh, thank God. Yeah, and God has blessed me because yes. actually I shouldn't be here. I had that. I had it so bad that I was close to death's door. But uh, God has other plans for me. Yes, yes. You know. And I know this is hard to talk about, but you lost your mom like like two months ago. Two months yesterday. Yeah, and you told me you were off camera that you always would pick up the phone and talk to her well, every day. She is a big void. Her, I know where she is. Yes. I know she's happy yes. and healthy and beautiful, but I miss her. Mm -hmm. I miss having her. I talk to her every day on the phone, mm -hmm. every single day. So I miss being able to do that. I do pick up the phone and call my dad yes. every single day. That might drive him nuts, but you know I have this urge yes. to call home. Oh, right. So he gets to talk to me now, and he doesn't seem to mind. Uh -huh. And every night when I hang up, I say, I'll talk to you tomorrow. He says, OK, sweetie. Yes. So, I just, she was a good mother. She was a great wife. My parents were married for 63 years. Wow. Um, they had a wonderful marriage. They were still like teenagers in love, even in their 80s. Wow. They doted on each other. Um, but God had a plan. My mother's now in heaven with yes. her families right. and her sisters. Right. And, you know, I, she, my mother loves food. She was a good cook. We loved to eat her food. And I'm sure she's feasting at this grand table <laughs> and enjoying herself more than we can imagine. And do you, I mean, a lot of people don't know this, but we as Christians have the ability to talk to God and talk to the Holy Spirit. Are you able to talk to your mother, do the Holy Spirit, do God? Every, it's funny you should say that. Every morning I get up and I say, Jesus, yes. please tell mom I love her. Yes. Every day. Yes. And I know he does it because I asked him to and he said I could ask for anything. Right, right exactly. Mm -hmm. That is so awesome. So what's been next for you? I know you're running the campaign for House District 114 and you expect to win in November, but what's next for you? Well, I want to get past that hurdle. I mm -hmm. never take anything for granted. Um, and we'll see. God has a plan. I try not to disrupt it. I yes. just try to pay attention right, right. and go where he leads me to go. Uh, so we'll see. We'll get up to the state house. We'll see what happens. You know, there are things that I feel strongly about, like children. Right. You know, they're near and dear to my heart. Sure. Babies, Genius. little kids. I just adore them. Yes. You know, so I can see myself fighting for them. Um, I, I think the low country needs more attention. We have lost that since we've lost so many senior people right. up there. Right. Um, and I like to fight for that. Now, I know I'm going to be in the back row. But that's okay. I still have a lot to say. That is so great to hear. Well, Lynn Bennett, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure as always. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you.